All right, welcome back into Content Snacks. Hope everyone had a very happy Thanksgiving. Also, hope you enjoyed our Thanksgiving episode last Wednesday. Uh, that was just something fun. If you did, let me know uh, what you thought about it. Uh, well, I guess let me know either way, but but particularly if you enjoyed it. This week, so last week's snacks, the last week uh, that we did snacks was all about kind of theory. It was about 2022 planning. It was about uh, some some ideas you could use to uh, be prepared for the new year when it comes to your your marketing and your strategy. And now this week is all going to be about execution. So uh, we've got four episodes about different either challenges or uh, action items that we are taking, that I am taking, and I invite you to take along with me. Uh, let's dive into it. All right, so we have 33 days left as of today in this year. And uh, what I want to do is I'm going to commit. This is based, this has been inspired by our episode that we had with Rachel Braun a couple of weeks ago. And she talked about how she really grew her brand and, uh, and, and eventually really earned a career through 100 days of outbound outreach. So she contacted over 100 days, she contacted 100 people to come on her podcast. And those of those 100 people, you know, she made great connections. She um, found some folks who eventually offered her jobs, all those sorts of things. So I'm not looking for a job, but I think this is a good exercise that we could all go through. And so we've got 33 days left, and uh, I want to you to join me on an outbound challenge. Now, yours might look completely different than mine, um, but commit to some form of outbound outreach, uh, connection, creation, something that you're going to do consistently over the next 33 days. Let me give you an example of what mine looks like. I need to reach out to 33 potential guests for content is for closers. Now, that is the tip of the spear for our new business development uh, program. And it's not necessarily the guests that we have on, although it could be, uh, but it's it's the guests that we have on, it's the, it's the conversations that we have, and then the assets that we create out of that we use as part of our new business process. And so uh, having people in the pipeline, having 33 great people who could, you know, um, uh, who, who can bring great content, bring great conversations, bring great insights is really, really important for our entire business, especially in, in coming into a new year. So these are the criteria of the folks that I'm going to reach out to, and you can hold me accountable over the next 33 days between now and January 1st, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to find or contact 33 potential guests for content for closures. These are criteria. First of all, one category of, of, of person would be inspirational. So this is someone who uh, fits my target market and, and mirrors who our target market is and is executing in a way that generates results. So it's inspirational to my target audience, right? Uh, and, and to me, but like for someone who's listening to the show and who's wondering what a good example of execution looks like, like what, what does it look like when this is done correctly? Um, it's inspirational for them. Some examples, we've already had Santosh Shankar on, who uh, obviously is inspirational. He's he's do, done over 120 episodes at this point and uh, is seeing tons of results as a result of it for the last several years. Another one that will be coming on, uh, or you know, maybe we've already recorded but has not been published yet, is Jeremy Kellett, who is the host of the Oakley Trucking Podcast, another one who's been committed and seen a lot of great results out of it. So that would be an example of an inspirational person. I need to find some of those to bring on the show. The next category is aspirational. So this could be someone inside or outside of the target market who is executing and seeing massive results, right? So again, this is from the perspective of my audience. The, the aspirational might mean that Maybe it's a little bit out of their reach. Maybe it's someone who really doesn't fit the model of what they are trying to do, but the work that they're doing is, uh, is, is, you know, generates new ideas. It helps, uh, show what's, what's possible through the medium, that sort of thing. So two examples of folks that we've already had on that fit this would be Landon Campbell. So he's not a, a target in terms of someone that we would work with as a client, but I think his story and the way that he's executing is aspirational for our 
prospect and customer base. Uh, the next would be Whitney Holtzman. She, again, is not somebody that would we would ever work with in a client, you know, vendor relationship necessarily, but uh, the way that she's gone about building her content, her business, all of those things is aspirational for our content. So our, our customers, so very helpful there. So, so far we've had inspirational and aspirational. The next two are subject matter expert and influencer. So let's start with subject matter expert. This is someone who can educate or teach our audience um, something new as it relates to content and, and growth. The, this, this person may not be a creator themselves individually, but they have an educational component that they can offer and value to bring there. Two examples here, uh, pretty obvious, but Mickey Cloud and Maribel Lara, both of them work at the Sasha Group. Both of them actually do education for small businesses as it relates to content on a regular basis. Uh, so they were both great guests in that fashion. We need more of those. The final category is influencer. And this could be an industry influencer or, or someone who's near the industry, whose presence will grow our audience and who will, they will get access to our audience, our existing audience in return. Okay. So this concept is, is we haven't done this with content is for closers. This is essentially what we built the startup show for, for those of you who are OGs, uh, on, we really didn't have any of the other categories when it came to the startup show. We really only built on, uh, influencers. And, um, so I, I want to sprinkle it in here, but I don't want it to be an exclusive part of, of what we do for a bunch of reasons. Um, but we know kind of what this looks like because of our experience with the startup show. This is someone who definitely, you know, we would never necessarily work with. They may not fit our category specifically, but they have something of value to say, something inspirational, aspirational to say, uh, and they bring with them a large audience. And so for the health of the show and for our audience growth, they're a good person for us to bring on. S simultaneously, you know, they may not be someone who our audience currently is familiar with. And so they get access to our audience. Uh, I'm sharing all of this. This is kind of like all behind the scenes, but I just want to show you how I'm thinking about outbound. These are the types of people that I need to reach out to. You might have a completely, de you definitely have a completely different set of criteria uh, that you would need to follow for whatever your objective is. But specifically, I need to be better about st being strategic in creating our brand name uh, rather than just kind of having conversations as they, as they come up ad hoc. And so the question needs to continue to come back to how does herd benefit from this in the long term? So that's what I'm doing. I'm reaching out to 33 people for the next 33 days. You keep me accountable and uh, let me know, reach out, text me, email me, whatever, uh, what you are going to commit to do in terms of outbound over the next three, 33 days yourself. We'll see you back tomorrow.